गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वन मोर पैरासाइट दैट इज जी आर डी एंड टेस्टाइनलिस और जी आर डी एल एम्बिया इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज मिद नेम्स लाइक लैम्बिया एंड टेस्टाइनलिस एंड जी आर डी आर डोडोनलिस बट राइट नाउ इट इज पॉपुलर विद द नेम जी आर डी आर लैम्बिया सो कमिंग टू द इंट्रोडक्शन जी आर डी आर इज अ प्रोटोचोआ फ्रॉम फाइला मेस्टिगोफोरा जी आर डी एज ए जूनोसिस डिजीज that is found in more than 40 animal species most important species causing human infection is known as giardia lambia which we are studying in this particular topic it is a common flagellate found in human digestive tract and highly contagious but usually not fatal giardia is known to cause giardiasis which is a diarrheal disease once a patient a person or animal for example cats dogs cattle deer mavers has been infected with giardia the parasite lives in the intestine and passed in the feces epidemiology it's it is worldwide distributed in humans and animals however it is more common in warm climate places like india africa and south america it mainly affects children travelers hikers and swimmers it is highly prevalent in developing countries because of their poor sanitation and hygienic condition where the prevalence rate is around 15 to 20% in developed countries because of their good poor uh, good, good hygienic conditions and the prevalence rate in adults is around 2% while in children it is between 6 to 8% which makes it below 10% overall infection often resolves spontaneously without any treatment however treatment help it to reduce much quicker chronic infections may occur and that mainly occurs only in immunocompromised individuals habitat the parasite lives in the small intestine of the human we'll discuss later where it lives and how it lives morphology of giardi lambia so giardia lambia completes its life cycle in two stages one of them is proposite stage which you can see in this diagram and the other stage is cyst stage so we are starting with the proposite stage as you can see it is a pear shaped organism it is having four pairs of flagella it means total eight flagella it is having two nucleus its ventral side is concave while dorsal side is convex which makes it as a cup like structure and because of this cup like structure only as you can see in this bottom diagram it can attach to any surface now this is known to bind to the intestinal surface so because of this cup like structure only it will create a suction like factor and it will easily attach to the intestinal surfaces i'll show you diagrams later on also other points related to dimensions has been given in the slide this is the cyst of this particular organism where you can see it's a oval structure which is having a cyst wall and it is having a four no it is having four nuclei proposoid is having two nuclei while cyst is having four nuclei and the flagella are present however they are retracted inside the cyst itself formation of cyst is called a cystation while coming out of cyst uh, proposoids can come out from cyst that is called excystation host so as i already told you humans and animals are the host for this infective stage so cyst is the infective stage to human one of the important factor which helps the cyst to cause disease is it's high resistant towards various environmental factors like it can survive in cold and moist conditions it remain viable for months in cold water two months at 8 degree centigrade and for one month at 21 degree centigrade it can also survive freezing it is susceptible to desiccation and direct sunlight also which makes it highly res resistant and it can survive for long time transmission so route of transmission is orofecal route it occurs because of the consumption of contaminated food and water people who is living in day cares nursing homes mental asylums there it is highly prevalent because of poor hygiene people who are homosexuals in them also this disease is very common life cycle as you can say we already discussed transmission occurs due to the consumption of consumption of contaminated food with cyst so the cyst will get into the intestine in the intestine 
now inside the intestine you can see in the bottom what will happen the cyst will undergo excitation in the small intestine particularly in duodenum and jejunum so from this cyst trophozoite will come out now trophozoite because of its in this uh, suction effect or you can see because of its unique structure it can bind to the intestinal walls that time this trophozoite is also multiplying there by binary fission and increasing its number so later on in the last phase this trophozoite will get into the colon of the intestine and it will again turn into cyst so initially in the starting part excitation is taking place in the upper parts of the small intestine that is duodenum and jejunum and later on in the colon of the intestine which is the last part of large intestine incestation is taking place cyst will form and it will be passed later on into the stool so same thing is happening here the uh, incestation is taking place at the end and this organism along with trophozoite and cyst uh, stool will be passed and that can contaminate food and water again and cycle will continue so here you can read the steps once again pathogenesis so giardia is we have discussed it's a intestinal parasite however it is non invasive in nature it does not invade from the intestine and gets somewhere else once excitation occurs trophozoites are released and they use their flagella to swim to the microvilli covered surface of duodenum and jejunum where they attach to the enterocytes or intestinal cells using their adhesive disc or you can say that structural suction like structure as you can see in this diagram here so here you can clearly understand the concave and convex structure of this organism and the bottom what you are seeing is the intestinal wall so you can clearly see how it is attaching to the intestinal walls this attachment process damages microvilli which interferes with the nutrient absorption i will say as i think all of you know microvilli and villi are commonly working for, towards the absorption of the nutrients from the intestine rapid modification of trophozoites by the binary fission eventually creates a physical barrier between the enterocytes and intestinal lumen further interfering with the nutrient absorption as we have discussed just now this process lead to enterocytes damage villi atrophy cryptic hyperplasia intestinal hyperpermeability and brush border damage that causes a reduction in disaccharide enzyme secretion now this disaccharide enzyme is very important for the digestion of uh, disaccharides or you can say complex carbohydrates so if this will be reduced then digestion will not be proper and person cannot get uh, sufficient nutrients so trophozoites do not invade or penetrate in the surrounding tissues or it also does not enter into the blood stream so infection is generally restricted to the intestinal lumen itself we have also discussed about this earlier also giardias results in the uh, decrease jejunum electrolyte and water glucose absorption and i think all of you understand when there is lack of absorption these things will be released out okay so and damage to intestinal epithelium leads to the malabsorption of electrolytes and fluids resulting in osmotic diarrhea known as giardias and along with diarrhea these parasite trophozoites and cysts will also be excreted out symptoms so incubation period is usually 1 to 25 days based on person's immunity most in, uh, symptoms are asymptomatic symptoms of clinical disease it means like some cases could be symptomatic so these people will show these symptoms so there is mild to severe gastrointestinal signs sudden onset of diarrhea foul smelling stool abdominal cramps bloating nausea fatigue and weight loss usually illness will last in 1 to 2 week however in immunocompromised patients we might see chronic infection which may last for months or years immunodeficiency uh, as i already told you it may mainly occur in immunodeficient immunocompromised patients this may lead to malabsorption syndrome vitamin deficiency severe weight loss and uh, deviations now these things themselves can lead to several other problems into the human body and in this condition patient might also show disaccharide intolerance it means whenever somebody will eat food which is having disaccharides or carbohydrates they'll get vomiting or diarrhea this happens because of the 
uh, re reduction in the production of disaccharide enzyme which we discussed earlier diagnosis so for this sample of choices tool sample we can collect this tool sample and do direct microscopy by saline wet mount or iodine wet mount there we can see the presence of tropozoids which is again we we have discussed the structure earlier the appear shape having two nuclei and flagella as you can see in this diagram this is how we will see this particular tropozoite other than tropozoite as i told you cyst can also be seen and this is the diagram of cyst how it will look like other than this we can also do immunofluorescence training of the stool sample where we can see the presence of cyst like this where cyst will appear oval in shape and they are glowing other than this from blood we can do ELISA for detection of antibodies while stool sample uh, we can also isolate uh, DNA from the sample and we can do PCR for the diagnosis of this from the stool sample treatment so we have um, anti-protozoal drugs available for treating this so some of the popular drugs include metronidazole tindidazole or nidazoles while in chronic cases in the people who are immunocompromised uh, which may be resistant so prolonged therapy may be needed for curing this disease by the same drugs prevalence and control uh, sorry prevention and control so obviously it's a orofecal disease so we need to manage the things which will lead to the orofecal contamination or contamination of food and water so we should not drink contaminated water if water is contaminated we should treat it properly i think all of you know how to treat it filtration chlorination uh, now it is we are having advanced filters right now any raw fruit and vegetables we are consuming we should wash them properly to remove any cyst or proposers from it practice good hygiene that includes head washing hand washing sewage treatment plant and all these things efficient frequent treatment that is stp sewage treatment plant should be installed so that stool sample is not going and mixing with regular food supplies thank you